So depending where you are in your care journey, workplace benefits play different roles. Whether you're returning to work after a leave of absence, taking a short or long-term medical leave, or working through treatment, you might be reduction in hours or even changing jobs. So you wanna familiarize yourself with your benefit offerings at every stage of the game. Your employer will choose which benefits that they offer each year and what financial contribution that they're even gonna contribute. And there's a lot to consider when evaluating your benefit package. And important to look at your personal situation during onboarding of a new job, during your open enrollment periods, or even special enrollment periods that you're eligible for. And this may change year over year, and it's a perfect time to assess your current and projected healthcare needs while making the decision. One of the most common benefits that are offered through employer is health insurance. It's also the most affordable way to obtain coverage, traditionally speaking. Um, other benefits could be uh, disability coverage, dental or vision, um, they might, you might have life insurance. These are all areas of consideration for you. Now, I think where it, it matters and where it applies is subjective to where you are in your employment journey. If you are already employed and you have elected benefits, understanding what you have and what you carry is critical. If you find yourself in a situation where your diagnosis has put you in a place where you might need to take a leave of absence, um, you would want to know if you carried a short-term or long-term disability plan, because those are um, their benefits that provide offset cost and, and give you a source of income while you're unable to work, but you've had to have elected them. And so that kind of flips me to the person who might be looking for employment um, and what kind of what's important for them as they look at their um, opportunities of employment options but also what benefit packages there are. And sometimes they are offered to you at no cost and other times you have to elect them. And so we strongly encourage you to understand them all, ask the right questions and pick um, all the options that are, are the most critical for you. If you have pre-existing health conditions, there can sometimes be clauses upon them so that they can't be utilized within a certain time frame when they go into effect. So those are important to keep in mind. Health insurance does not operate that way because health insurance is now has uh, protections that do not prohibit against pre-existing health conditions, but those don't apply to other benefit packages um, and they might uh, be present. You might notice as you have options of enrollment and there's something new added to your company benefit or you are a new hire that you are offered opportunities that don't preclude you or have screenings involved. And I just strongly can suggest you consider them, especially if you have a health condition that might prohibit your ability to get it from the private sector. There are also employer protections to keep in mind. So you have the family medical leave. So that's an, uh, a law that protects employees and the individual family members. You have to meet certain guidelines. You have to have worked for the approved amount of time. So it's it's 12 weeks of a year of protection, but you've had to have been so many hours within a year period and within a, a, a particular number of employees to get that. However, some employers will honor that regardless. And then there's the American with Disabilities Act, and that's a reasonable accommodation, um, which also is titled like ADA. You might've heard that before. But it's a change in the application or hiring process to the job, uh, the way the job is done, or the work environment that you um, are in that you might be asking for what's considered a reasonable accommodation, and it does not create an undue hardship and direct threat. Now, those are um, subjective to your employer, and it is something that you need to seek out some guidance and support. And some of the ones I've heard are, you know, I, can I work an alternative schedule? Um, or can I uh, possibly remote work? And that would be dependent on the skill that the job that you're doing. And you know, if you were a cashier at a grocery store, you wouldn't be able to remote work because you would not be the essential duties of your role. But if you were, uh, you know, in an office setting and that was a reasonable thing, and that was that that might be considered, for instance. Um, 
The other component to understand is that the family medical leave does help. So if maybe you're not the one with the diagnosis, but you have a loved one and the protection can apply for that so that you can take the time off to help them, you know, to get to care, or, you know, take care of them. Whereas the um, ADA does not apply to anyone outside the employee. So it's not for family members. And so that's just something um, that we like to share. I had a recent example come into the organization where the father needed to take some time off to bring their disabled daughter to their to work. Um, she was unable to um, drive herself and yet it overlaid a little bit within his job. And so he wasn't able to use his lunchtime and was looking for an opportunity to have protection and, and expand that time to, to meet those expectations and get her to work and also fulfill his job opportunity. His 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 uh, choices were to look at family medical leave. Of course, I mentioned there's a 12 week cap, um, but he could use it intermittently because ADA did not apply since he was the um, employee. So the other thing, as you're looking at your workplace benefits, keep in mind um, the other fringe benefits or employment assistance programs or wellness programs. And um, there are supplemental indemnity plans. So uh, life insurance is another. And some of the common um, supplemental plans you'll hear are like accident, serious illness, cancer policies. Um, and those are, again, you know, there are opportunities to potentially offset costs associated to your deductibles or co-pays and, um, and if something were to present with a health condition that falls within those areas of coverage. Again, please read the fine language and talk to your benefits to make sure that there are not exclusions, especially that you understand that so that you're not paying for a benefit you might not be able to tap into or you recognize that there is a wait period before you can benefit from them.